Hey guys, welcome back to another week of MedGeek's case study videos. You know, we've done a lot of abdominal pain. We did a really interesting elevated LFTs last week. But this week we have foot pain. You got some ortho in here now after some gen surge and in, uh, internal medicine. So let's do this, guys. Uh, this is a 19-year-old female yeah. in no past medical history. Came to the ED at my hospital for right foot pain. Uh, she said, you know... She was walking down the subway stairs. By the way, subway stairs are are the trains here. Uh, so she's walking down the subway stairs. She inverted her foot and uh, fell down two stairs. And now she's having some lateral foot pain. So, so two stairs is in two steps, not two flights. Two steps, yeah. Okay. And she didn't fall. Just on the so she landed on the lateral aspect of her foot okay. from two stairs. Uh, so we got called by the ED to evaluate this patient for a possible fracture. Uh, when I got there, you know, she told me the story. She's complaining of about eight out of 10 pain and, uh, some, some swelling to the lateral aspect of the foot. She denies any numbness or tingle. Um, all vitals, all vital signs are stable on exam. As always, as I discussed this with the distal radius fracture, the first thing you want to do with an ortho exam is... A neuro exam. A neuro exam. So uh, for the foot, you want to check for three things. You want to check for the extensor halcus longus. So make sure the toe can point up. Mm -hmm. You want to check for the tibialis anterior. Uh, and you want to check for the gastroc. So, so those are responsible for plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Uh, and so those were intact. So motor, intact. All right, what about sensation? Sensation intact from L4 to S1 distribution. Okay. So intact. Okay. And, what about vascular? And her dorsalis pedis was 2+. plus. Oh. And foot was warm, well perfused. Capillary refill was less than 2 seconds, uh, which means neurovascular intact. She's good to go from that standpoint. Uh, in terms of her foot, uh, skin was intact, which is good. She had moderate swelling. Okay. To the lateral aspect of the foot, which is expected because that's where she fell. Yeah. And to the forefoot. Um, other than that, uh, nothing else going on. Mild ecchymosis, I would say. And no bony deformity that was visible to, to my eye. Uh, she had some tenderness to palpation to the lateral aspect of the foot and the forefoot diffusely. But pinpointed more to its lateral as aspect, specifically to... Mid to proximal fifth metatarsal. Okay. And, uh, you know, especially with, like, these inversion injuries, it's very common to have a distal fibular fracture or ligamentous injuries. Oh, right? Like your like ATFL. Sprain ankle. ATFL sprain. Um, so she, you want to check for the medial and lateral mound, make mm -hmm. sure they're okay. She didn't have any tenderness there. So to recap, we had a 19-year-old. Who fell on the lateral aspect of her foot, some swelling, and tenderness to the, the proximal to mid fifth metatarsal. Okay, so at this point, if you're telling me she has pinpoint tenderness at this one location, you know, mid to proximal yeah. fifth metatarsal, I'm thinking that's probably where a break is. Yeah. Localized pain after trauma, pretty indicative of a fracture. Yeah. So I'm not ortho. <laughs> But I would think the next step is to see something, to go through imaging to get a flat film. But now would you do an x-ray, just AP of the foot or multiple views? Or... Yeah, so typically initially you want to start with AP and lateral. And lateral. Yeah. Um, definitely want to see both sides. Okay. And, you know, depending on what you see from there, you go ahead and, you know, you can order ankle stress views if you think you know, there's some ligamentous injury. Um, but typically with these, just AP lateral. And so what did you do for this patient? Because we didn't suspect, or you didn't suspect a ligamentous injury with her. Right. So we got the x-rays and the x-ray showed a displaced transverse fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal, okay. aka Jones fracture. Yeah. So Jones fracture, um, especially on your PA boards, very important. They will test you on it for sure. That and scaphoid will be like the two ortho questions you will have on there and probably distal radius. But Or skiffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, so yeah. So you definitely need to know Jones fractures for your boards. Um, fifth metatarsal. practice it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Everyone will see it in urgent care. You see it in emergency rooms. You see it in ortho, obviously. You see it in um, primary care. Cause some, yeah. So for some reason, people think they can come to primary yeah. care with everything possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about fifth metatarsal fractures. Fairly common because yeah. they're caused by inversion injuries. Um, three zones. I'll put up this picture right here. So zone one is the hind foot inversion injury. So essentially, if you think of this as your hind foot, going like this. And this will cause what we call the pseudo Jones or an avulsion fracture. Um, zone two, this is the forefoot adduction. So this is what this uh, lady yeah, yeah. had. Uh, if you can think of this as the front, you have the forefoot, and then the adduction. So it seems painful. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> and zone three, you'll have people, we call it the dancer's fracture, uh, mostly because you'll see this a lot of, in, in dancers, obviously, because there's a lot of micro trauma, repetitive uh, stress on that same part of the mm-hmm. bone. So you'll have a, a stress fractures, essentially. So this patient, she had a zone two fifth metatarsal fracture. Correct. Or Jones fracture. Yeah. So now that we know what it is, what do you do about it? If anything, because I know sometimes in ortho it's just supportive care. Yeah, so so it's important to know with Jones, it's a watershed area. Okay. So there isn't much blood flow going to this region. And that's why it's important and critical to understand what is a Jones fracture and how to treat that Jones fracture. The non-union at this zone, at zone two, is approximately 15 to 30 percent. So they're prone to non-union and that can cause issues over a long period of time. So for this, you want to get x-rays to determine which zone it is, Mm -hmm. whether one, two, or three. CT is rarely needed unless you're experiencing non-union and delayed union after a while. Um, But otherwise, X-ray should be good enough. Yeah. In terms of treatment, it also depends on the zone. Okay. So zone one. Uh, the avulsion fracture. The avulsion fractures. You want to put them in a hard sole shoe. Okay. Or you can put them in a hard sole boot too, um, for approximately six weeks, and they tend to heal pretty well by themselves. Uh, de- also, that also depends on you know how much it's displaced, obviously, but majority of them heal fairly well. well. Zone 2, the Jones fractures, again, these have high rates of non-union. So these typically get short leg cast. You want to immobilize them even more. So So you want to give them a short leg cast and surgery depending on the discretion of the surgeon and the patient. So if it's an athlete, whether it's a professional elite or, you know, just a normal... A high school athlete who does a lot of activities, uh, surgeries indicated for these. Okay, and what about the 40 year old woman who just shops, like went grocery shopping and yeah. had this fracture? So, for a layman, it, it depends on their occupation and their lifestyle. Okay. So, if it's like let's an say office a worker, 70 year old secretary who just works in the office and goes back home, yeah. um, or even like an 85 year old wheelchair bound lady you know as opposed to a 20 year old like this or 19 year old like this who's going to be in and on her uh, feet feet all the time uh it depends it depends okay so for this lady you know because this fracture was displaced Mm -hmm. this will need surgery so this lady uh i put her in a short leg cast and uh bivalved it which is just cutting two slits of the cast to allow room for swelling. And uh, had our follow-up in about one week. So this isn't something that she needs to have taken care of at the very moment. You don't you don't buy yourself an ortho admission with a Jones fracture. No, it's not so you it's can, not an emergency. Uh, you can allow for healing for one week and then an orthopedic intervention? Yeah, yeah. So essentially we do one one week for a couple of reasons number one being that you can start seeing bone healing in about a week to two weeks usually callus formation is in two weeks but you can see signs of it within a week so would you be able to then see whether this is going to 
be a non-union delayed heal? Sometimes. Sometimes okay. you can. Uh, it's it's hard to see within one week because you just... There's not Soft enough. callus formation is just beginning to form, mm-hmm. so it's hard to tell. Um, and number two, the reason is there's a lot of swelling and inflammation around just because of the fracture. So you wait for the fracture or the, the swelling, swelling to go open. down in case you want to do an operative uh, that makes sense. course of action yeah. for this for this uh, patient. So yeah, this patient did go for surgery uh, because it was it was displaced. displaced. Um, but I think the more main thing to know for a Jones fracture is that it's a watershed area. Non-union is very high. And uh, it's important to identify them. It's important to identify them as opposed to avulsion or stress that's fraction. Um, but Jones fracture is the one that's going to be critical, that's going to need surgery most likely, and uh, you know, because of non union rates. But yeah, it's that's really interesting. Yeah. And I think it's really important because, like you said, the Jones fracture may need intervention, whereas the others will be able to heal um, on their own. Yeah, exactly. But, and it's always yeah. a board question. So. Remember, Jones Fracture, Zone 2, non-union, must get a short leg cast and probable surgery. Cool. Thanks for the awesome game. Yeah, that's it, guys. We'll see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.